dandelion, staring into the dying embers, sat much longer, alone, quietly strumming his lute. It began with a few bars, from which an elegant, soothing melody emerged. The lyric suited the melody, and came into being simultaneously with it, the words bending into the music, becoming set in it like insects in translucent golden lumps of amber. The ballad told of a certain witcher and a certain poet, about how the witcher and the poet met on the seashore, among the crying of seagulls, and how they fell in love at first sight, about how beautiful and powerful was their love, about how nothing, not even death, was able to destroy that love and part them. Dandelion knew that few would believe the part of the story told by the ballad, but he was not concerned. He knew ballads were not written to be believed, but to move their audience. Several years later, Dandelion could have changed the contents of the ballad and written about what had really occurred. He did not, for the true story would not have moved anyone. Who would have wanted to hear that the witcher and little eye parted and never, ever saw each other again. About how four years later, Little Eye died of the smallpox during an epidemic raging of eczema, and about how he, Dandelion, had carried her out in his arms between corpses being cremated on funeral pyres and buried her far from the city, in the forest, alone and peaceful, and as she had asked, buried two things with her, her loot and her sky-blue pearl the pearl from which he never parted. No, Dandelion stuck with his first version, and he never sang it, never, to no one. Right before the dawn, while it was still dark, a hungry, vicious werewolf crept up to their camp, but saw that it was Dandelion, so he listened for a moment, and then went on his way. <laughs>